One of the massive talking points in the 2019 Formula One season is going to be the performance of this package, Red Bull Honda. Honda is back at the front of the grid for the first time in a long time, it looks like. And I've got two people who have followed Honda's progress and struggles in Formula One of late, Scott Mitchell and Ben Anderson, to discuss what we can expect from this car and its engine through the season. And Scott, I'm going to put you on the spot immediately. Are Red Bull Honda going to win a race in 2019? Yeah, I think so. They definitely should. There's no, there's no reason going into the season why they shouldn't. I would uh, maybe you, you target the usual Red Bull strongholds. I think Monaco absolutely should be trying to win there. Um, maybe Hungary as well. Um, Mexico, Singapore, places like that. But Red Bull are talking about trying to move away from this circuit dependency and the positivity with which this partnership has started. The fact that they certainly don't seem to be starting the year worse off than Red Bull started 2018 with Renault. The fact that Honda's talking about apparently eating quite a lot into its qualifying deficit in, in, in full power mode compared to Mercedes and Ferrari. And the reliability was quite good in testing as well. So at risk of talking them up massively and then sort of setting them up for a fall, but I, I don't see any reason why Red Bull and Honda can't be targeting wins in the first half of the season. That's remarkable, isn't it, Ben? You know, we've seen so many struggles from Honda during the McLaren years and then kind of the year out of the spotlight with Toro Rosso. And now suddenly we're here and Scott sounds incredibly confident. Do you share that confidence? And if so, have Red Bull just got lucky with their timing here to pick up the Honda at the time it's finally ready to race at the front? I think uh, I do share your confidence. Certainly they should win a race. It doesn't seem like they're any worse off than they were before with Renault from a performance point of view. So therefore you'd expect them to be contenders, as Scott says, in places like Monaco, Mexico particularly, and maybe Singapore, it's always quite tight with Ferrari there. Mm -hmm. um, timing wise, it does seem like they've kind of lucked in. Um, Honda's had all of its struggles and now seems to be finally coming good. I mean, we won't know, of course, until everyone's got their uh, cards out on the table at the, at the first races um, and we see where they stack up actually against Ferrari and Mercedes. If those two teams have taken big steps, we know obviously Mercedes has an all new engine this year, then perhaps they could fall further away given that they're largely developing a, a concept that they've carried over uh, Honda. Um, it certainly seems like poor timing from McLaren's point of view. Um, having given up that engine in 17 when it looked like there was no way they'd ever get it right and then over the last 12, 18 months it does seem like Honda has come good. I mean Red Bull hasn't lucked in in the sense that they have done proper analysis before making this move. The, the interim step with Toro Rosso was quite neat for them because they could look at all the data and take their time to actually properly analyse one package against the other and ultimately um, led them to taking the Honda. So. Um, calculated clever move from Red Bull that offers a lot of potential now that they're a full-blown works partnership and they can start to set the tone in terms of packaging, uh, fuel and lubricants, um, dyno time, things that they were frustrated by in their customer relationship with Renault and obviously they save themselves 15 million pounds I think it is a year, something like that, um, that they can throw into other areas such as aerodynamic development. And let's not forget as well the whole point of the Toro Rosso partnership was to evaluate Honda because Red Bull uh, I think their first communication with Honda was over when they had that big falling out with Renault, didn't they? And was it 2017 and they didn't want to continue? It was either 2016 or 2017, I can't remember. Every off the top year, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was when they basically were like, no, this isn't happening. The, the, t we, the partnership's over at the end of this year and they, they had talks with Honda, they, they spoke with Mercedes and Ferrari and in the end, because this, this is how the, the Renault Tag Heuer branding came about because... That was the end of 15, wasn't it, I think? Yeah, because, it because Ron blocked the Honda he did. deal, didn't yes. he, yeah, over exactly. exclusivity. So and in the end, the FIA wrote rules to say, well, we have to come up with a formula so that every team's supplied because nobody except Renault were prepared to supply yeah. Red Bull. Exactly. So the, the, the sort of genesis of Red Bull Honda is years in the making. They could have gone then, they were blocked. They could have gone, they could have tried to go last year, but they thought Toro Rosso is a, is a safer bet here. Um, and they've been able to do all of that messy groundwork, which ended up not actually being that messy for Toro Rosso last year, without actually having to sacrifice a season or two to get that development sort of underway to the point where they can come straight in with, with Honda engines this year and, and, and very probably win in the first year of the partnership. It's the luxury of the second team, isn't it? I was at the Canadian Grand Prix last year and one of our colleagues walked into one of the offices at the Red Bull uh, hospitality unit 
and saw data out from both cars net printed out next to each other showing exactly how the straight line speed performance of the Honda and the Red Bull compared and even by that point I think Red Bull were very happy with what they were seeing from the Honda package. So it all sounds good, we're talking them up, but while we didn't have smoking Honda engines parked up at the side of the track in testing like we saw perhaps during the McLaren years, Scott, it wasn't flawless during testing, was it? And there, there are some changes having to be made for Australia. Is that a cause for concern? Um, Honda says it isn't. They're being quite honest and saying, actually, this packaging that Red Bull was saying is a thing of beauty and the best installation we've ever had on the car, Honda have said, yeah, no, we're really happy with it. And we didn't sacrifice performance or reliability. But to be completely honest, there was it was a little bit too tight. I think uh, Toharu Tanabe, the Honda F1 technical director, described it to me, he sort of went, scuffing sort of like that with like the, the 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 installation of the engine so they might have pushed that sort of that that envelope just a, a little bit too far but personally i'm i'm actually quite pleased to see honda doing that because if they're saying it's not a major concern the fix is that they couldn't apply trackside they'll have in place for melbourne it's good to see honda back having that confidence again to to, to push the envelope because this was a team that sort of left a bit of margin for error last year. It was all reliability first to make sure that they actually had something that worked. Now that they're with Red Bull, a team famous for getting the most out of the car on the aero side, they need to be able to push the limit. So the fact that they're starting 2019 a little bit too aggressive in their own words, I think speaks volumes for the attitude, motivation and confidence that, that runs through Sakura and Milton Keynes that probably wasn't there 18 months ago. I think the most encouraging thing for Honda is that they seem to be starting the season with only minor concerns. OK, so the packaging is a bit tight for the mechanics to get their hands in and bolt things in, but that's all they're worried about. Whereas in the McLaren era, they, they were going into every season with fundamental flaws in the design, things showing up at testing that they hadn't accounted for on the dynos, vibrations, oil tanks that were poorly designed, that created problems that lasted almost through the whole season. It now seems like the Honda engine project has reached proper maturity, at least as a baseline, um, which is very good for Red Bull, knowing that the investment that's there and the facilities they have at Secura offer great potential for growth and obviously a bit gutting if you're part of the former McLaren regime that went through all that pain and now we'll see none of the gain. Well that's why I think Red Bull will probably be quite smug about this, Honda will be feeling quite vindicated and McLaren will be furious because the foundations of the collapse of McLaren Honda was all of that aggro at the start of 2017. But had Honda not gone through that, they wouldn't be in the position they are now because the engine they've got now is still an evolution of that concept that was so troubled when they introduced it in 2017. And this is the thing, this is what Toro Rosso was saying last year. When they first started to have their conversations with Honda at the end of 2017, having spent the last three years being told how bad this company is and how terrible a job they've done, they looked at everything and just went, this is actually quite good. I don't know what people are complaining about. So 2018 always went, or they always thought 2018 would be better than everyone else feared because they thought actually the level is higher than we've been made to believe. I think we're actually now starting to see that that was true and not just hot air with what we're seeing from Red Bull Honda. Yeah, the tiny window of slippage, if you like, for McLaren is that period from early 17 to autumn 17. Honda said at the end of 17 that that concept, which takes cues from the Mercedes layout, is the one they wish they'd started their hybrid programme with. But of course, when they introduced it, it was breaking down and causing endless trouble. And McLaren made their decision based on that. Whereas if they deferred that and made their decision perhaps on the basis of where Honda got to with that concept in terms of troubleshooting, maybe they would have made a different decision and we might be looking at a very different uh, approach coming into 2019.